Hi there, dear friends, and welcome to our small village. In winter time, woohoo! And the sun is shining. And this is where we live in our little house. And I am Sarah. And I live in that house together with my husband, Philip. He's a psychotherapist and um, author. And uh, we have uh, four children between three years and 10 years. Um, ah, look. I told you yesterday, the first day of this harvest calendar, that we had in our area only two hours of sunlight in uh, November. That was like a record. Hi, Catherine. You are still awake. <laughs> I said yesterday also that uh, I, I can't tell you before when I do the live streams. I know that some of you are asleep and uh, some of you are awake because uh, we, we don't live with the same time. Uh, so you will just have to watch it later on if, you, if it's too late for you maybe. Uh, I'd like to start today's um, harvest calendar by saying thank you for all the nice comments who, who watch this. I mean, we share the same kind of interests for gardening. And um, it would be so nice if, if you also told me something about what you can harvest. Uh, even if we don't live in the same country or in the same area, it would be so nice to, to hear what you can harvest today. You don't have to tell me all of the vegetables possible to harvest in your garden, but you could choose one uh, and tell me about one uh, vegetable each day as I tell you about one vegetable too. So um, yesterday I harvested leek um, and I did a fish in the oven um, and I served it with the potatoes and a salad bowl of fresh um, Chinese cabbage. Hi Birgit! <laughs> uh, I hope you understand my English, Birgit. Right, so um, Oops. Uh, what I did with the leek was that I, um, I, I put it in um, like a plate, I don't even know what you call it, but uh, I sliced it um, and I put it underneath a fish um, together with the fennel, a sprouted fennel and uh, some pepper from the fridge. I freeze uh, plenty of my vegetables because it's so easy to use uh, in winter time. So I had then uh, the fresh um, leek, fennel and pepper and I made a sauce with saffron and um, hmm, dragon. Don't know what that is in, in English. And then fish, uh, fish and sauce on top and in the oven for like 20 minutes or so. Good morning, Pat. Uh, and then served it with potatoes and fermented vegetables and this uh, salad bowl of fresh uh, uh, Chinese cabbage. And it was just super tasty, super, super tasty. And my three-year-old, he ate four portions <laughs> of this, so he really liked it. Yeah, and uh, today is a new day with my calendar. Uh, and I really like this idea. Um, I didn't expect it, though, to be this snowy and cold, <laughs> but um, yesterday evening when I went to bed by like midnight, it was melting. So it's not that cold, but well, it is cold. <laughs> I will turn the camera for you so you can see the whole kitchen garden. So this is how it looks right now. It's a bit messy over here because we had the the construction workers do you say construction workers so they are they have started their work they are going to renovate um, nearly all the upper floor and starting today 
so we had to throw out a few things uh, <laughs> from from above. And this is how the kitchen garden looks like right now. And I have plenty of food. Unfortunately, we have had deers visiting. I had left um, broccoli plants here for the uh, rabbits, our um, the bunnies, <laughs> the kids' rabbits. Um, but uh, the deers seem to have had a party here. It will be a bit tricky to find out what kind of vegetables I am going to harvest. <laughs> and that's why I, I think it's good to call this a challenge. And um, my, my plan was actually also to, um, maybe a day or two um, when I think I need it, um, show you something that I grow indoors because me and my three-year-old boy Lua we grows a lot indoors because it's it's great fun and it's he really likes uh, you know to make sewings but today uh, I am standing here by the brassica area and uh, I said yesterday when I passed this area also that it doesn't smell that fresh um, and some may be uh, surprised about this when you grow vegetables the first time. Um, when, when fall comes and winter comes, it starts to smell a bit awkward. And, um, and that is basically uh, the, the brassicas, rotten, uh, rotten brassicas. And uh, some of it will be uh, destroyed by now, uh, but some of it uh, are fresh as ever. And that depends only on what kind of varieties that you choose. <clears throat> and yesterday when I harvested the leek, I said that I choose the varieties very carefully so that I have varieties that I can harvest early that may not be that hardy, but I also have the very hardy varieties of like leek and uh, carrots and the parsnips and uh, brassicas so that I can harvest uh, in a long season. It's a bit difficult to talk because it's so cold right now. <laughs> and also, it will be tricky for me to do the live streams and uh, etc. because, uh, um, you know, the battery gets exhausted in, uh, in the phone when it's too cold. All right, so what am I going to harvest today? I am going to harvest uh, a kale and I will choose uh, one of the varieties that are not that hardy. And uh, I haven't checked yet underneath the nets, so I don't know if it's uh, still uh, <laughs> useful, but um, hopefully. Uh, here I have a variety of um, um, the green kale. Uh, it's very traditional in Swedish. Um, and that is um, a variety called um, dwarf green, um, dwarf green curled. Yeah, it is dwarf green curled, and it's a low variety, so it's easy to protect with the net in winter time, and it's super hardy. And the super hardy varieties are not necessary for me to harvest right now. I can wait harvesting them. And they will stand uh, freezing, um, you know, and um, even to thaw uh, and, and do that repeatedly um, underneath, under the winter. But some other kale varieties are not that hardy and I have to harvest them first. So that's what I'm going to do today. I am going to harvest the, we call it in Sweden, we call it black kale. Um, you will recognize it when I remove the net if it's possible to remove the net. Um, I'll try to do that and we'll see if, <laughs> if I find any over here. Here comes the rest of my family. They are going for a walk with the dog. Philip and Lua and Kuling. Hi Lua, will you wink? Philip and Kata, go for a naturally. 
Ja, just det. He's going to go by bike, he says. And here's Kuling and Philip. Du vinka Philip så jag hej. Hej hej. All right, back to the kale. I, I will try to put the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I hope this works. I don't know how good this net is. To... <laughs> yeah. Doot, 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 doot. This is so good. I can tell you this uh, this kale doesn't look super tasty. Um, it has some damages. This is grey mold, and I have had a problem this year because we it's been so damp. It's been raining. Um, it's been raining nearly every day. I have to comment the dog. <laughs> I can see that. Um, the dog is a Newfoundland dog. His name is Captain Kuling and he is four and a half year, years old and he weighs, uh, we, we, his weight is about 60 kilos. The dog we had before, uh, he weighed um, 70, 75 kilos, so he was 15 kilos <laughs> heavier. Uh, but yes, it's a big dog and we, we simply love loved that kind of big dog. I will turn the camera again so that you can see the kale. Here you can see the grey mold and this appears when it's very damp and it's been like, yeah, Tuscan kale. Um, the um, Nero di Toscana is a variety, very common here in Sweden. Um, and this is a variety, it's very special to me because this is the first time that I grow this variety. This is new in Sweden this year and the variety is uh, Juruk and it's Impekta who sells it and this is a low compact variety of um, this black kale and um, it's easier to grow uh, if you want to cover it with a net because uh, Nero di Toscana is a, is a tall variety, right? And it's more difficult to, to cover with a net in a, in a good way. But Yuruk has been a, a really, really lovely plant. When a plant looks like this, some of the uh, leaves are not that good to eat. Uh, but some of them, yes. So I prefer not to leave like this because you can see that it has some damages um, and most likely it's not that tasty. So I will try to find leaves that are not, have not been like close to a damaged area. This one, perfect. And some plants you can simply cut the whole top off. And here are several nice leaves. This is a bit tricky to do with just one hand. I just love this. No, this one was not good. Ah, 
hi Maria. Nice that you are looking. I, I bet you have snow in Norway too. Here I have my little treasure. It's a red cabbage and uh, the red uh, kale as well, a purple kale. And purple kale, um, my experience is that it's super, super hardy. It's even more hardier than the green kale, green kale and the black kale. So I, I really appreciate that in my garden. And the small cabbage head here, I am going to harvest it first when it uh, um, it's a bit warmer because it might be so that it's frozen and destroyed. But I guess I will have to get back to that uh, later on this month. But now, since um, I can see it's very useful to have the net um, because it protects the kale uh, on the cabbage. You see the small plants here and also here by the wheel barrel barrel um, they have all been eating eaten so uh, the net protects it perfectly well but they are hungry I can tell <laughs> you ask me about the greenhouse and if you will get to see it yes uh, if you look um, at yesterday's video uh, you will see um, how it looks uh, like inside and um, in a few days I guess I will be harvesting in in the polytunnel too So this is today's harvest in my harvest calendar. Black kale directly from the garden in December in Sweden. And I think it's amazing to get to share the possibilities and to show what you can actually harvest. And now you may wonder, oh, you didn't pick that much. You are a large family, but our kids, they don't like fried, um, black kale um, or green black kale that uh, a green kale that is fried so uh, when i serve this uh, for dinner it will only be for me and my husband and i will fry it with uh, some garlic and i will put some cream to um, uh, in in the end that will sort of boil uh, together with the kale and make it like a stew and it's super super tasty so I don't harvest more than I need. And that's very important because I don't want to waste anything. Look, here comes the... Hi, Moma from Natalie, from Italy. That's the construction builders. So they are going to do something now with the house. It's very super excited. And I will go inside to do a video right now, actually, uh, and share some pictures from the upper floor. Okay. Uh, if you want to, I would be so happy if you give me a comment and say something about what you can harvest in your garden today. You don't have to uh, give me a report about everything that you can harvest, but choose one vegetable and uh, tell me what you are going to do with it. So this will be served for dinner, fried with garlic and uh, cream. Thank you all for today and I'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, with a new report from the garden in my harvest calendar. And if you are English speaking, uh, I suggest you uh, check at sarahbackman.com to see more from my garden. And for you guys in Sweden, you will see me at sarahbackman.se. Ah, it's sunny. Have a lovely day or night. Bye bye.